Back in 2005, when I began writing about politics, there was no more hated enemy, more hated villain for liberal America than Bill Kristol. He was the leader of what was frequently then referred to as the neocons, people who had no real partisan uh, attachment. Some, they began as Democrats and they moved as part of the war on terror to the Republican Party, knowing that the Republican Party would be more eager under the war on terror to fight the wars they wanted to remove the governments of Iraq and Iran and Syria and their whole other warmongering list. And they became leading advocates of the war on terror, of the invasion of Iraq, of the invasion of Iran, of every regime change war that you could possibly imagine. Ones that the U.S. ended up fighting, ones that they wanted the U.S. to fight but didn't. They're notable for all kinds of things, including ensuring that it's always other people's families who fight in their wars and die in their wars, but never them themselves nor their families. We did an entire show on Bill Kristol, on the unique evil of this warmongering monster. And what is so amazing is that while 15 years ago, every liberal, every Democrat, every leftist agreed that Bill Kristol was essentially the embodiment of all evil, the root of all evil, a neocon monster, Bill Kristol has now completely resurrected his career. He's never been more, in, more influential in Washington and in media than he is now because he has now switched back again to being a Democrat. He is a very popular liberal pundit. He is funded by Pierre Omidyar, where he runs all sorts of anti-Trump news outlets like The Bulwark, and he has all kinds of groups that is fun are funded by Pierre Omidyar designed to promote Joe Biden's war policies in Ukraine and elsewhere. And Bill Kristol, who just this week gave an interview to the New Republic where he talked about his actual current party affiliation and the reasons for it. There you see the New Republic article. Are never Trump Republicans actually just Democrats now? You may remember that these never Trump Republicans claimed that they were offended by Donald Trump, that they were still conservative, still Republicans. They were just against Trump because they wanted to protect and resurrect American conservatism and, and the Republican Party and its honorable tradition of Dick Cheney and George Bush and Ronald Reagan and Mitt Romney and John McCain. And now they've given up that pretense entirely because the people who buy their books and who fund them and who constitute their social media fandom are almost entirely liberals and Democrats. And no one wants to hear any pretenses that they're really still Republicans. They don't want to ever hear any criticism of Joe Biden. So they basically have turned themselves, as the New Republic headline suggests, into just ordinary Democrats now. That's what they are. They're Democratic Party pundits. And you see the subheadline there. Some are already hardcore progressives. And pollsters, politicians, and analysts from both parties say it may be a matter of time before the rest switch parties too. So all the people that we were told were the real villains of international affairs and American politics, these wretched, deceitful, bloodthirsty neocons, aren't just anti-Trump and haven't just been anti-Trump from the beginning. And it's really worth asking, why are they so anti-Trump and why have they been so anti-Trump? But they've now become Democrats because they believe that the Democratic Party is the best vehicle to advance their ideology that has not changed at all. What has changed is their perception, I think accurately, that they find a lot of hostility to their warmongering agenda in the Republican Party and a lot of uh, positive uh, welcoming of it in the Democratic Party. So here from the, the New Republic article, quote, when asked where he was politically, Bill Kristol told the New Republic, quote, I'm pretty comfortable with the current Democratic Party. My fellow Never Trumpers are not comfortable with the current Republican Party. We don't think the hopes for its immediate reformation are very realistic. We are okay with Biden. We think, in fact, one thing we could do is strengthen the moderate Democratic Party. So that's their mission, that they're being, I guess, credibly honest about, that they no longer even pretending to try and salvage the Republican Party. They are Democrats, pure and simple. They're happy with the state of the Democratic Party. They want to strengthen the Democratic Party. And as part of that effort, Bill Kristol got $2 million from an undisclosed funder, I can only guess who it is, to launch an ad campaign designed to essentially increase the support for Biden's war policy in Ukraine, seeing that polls show Americans of all kinds, but especially conservatives and independents, are now turning against that war, believing we've already done too much for Ukraine, not wanting any more money to go to the war in Ukraine, not seeing the benefits of it. And so Bill Kristol has produced an ad ostensibly aimed at Republicans to convince them 
that the war in Ukraine is actually not only a nice and benevolent thing to do, because everyone knows that's why we fight wars, why the CIA prioritizes wars, because we're good, benevolent, kind, nice, empathetic people who just want to help others in the world. Not that the CIA is renowned for all throughout the world, but what Bill Crystal is saying is, it's not just that we're so kind and benevolent and we believe so deeply in spreading democracy, it's also that the war happens to actually be quite good for American interest as well. So I thought the ad was really worth watching because it's finally some candor about the real reasons we're in this war. Let's watch this ad. When America arms Ukraine, we get a lot for a little. Putin is an enemy of America. We've used 5% of our defense budget to arm Ukraine, and with it, they've destroyed 50% of Putin's army. We've done all this by sending weapons from storage, not our troops. The more Ukraine weakens Russia, the more it also weakens Russia's closest ally, China. America needs to stand strong against our enemies. That's why Republicans in Congress must continue to support Ukraine. So there you have it. It's essentially saying what has been clear from the beginning, which is the United States has no interest in protecting Ukraine. This war has not protected Ukraine. This war has destroyed Ukraine. And the longer the war goes on, obviously, the more of Ukraine will be destroyed. And we're not protecting or defending Ukrainians. The longer this war goes on, the more Ukrainians are dying. Zelensky is fighting with an increasingly desperate, untrained army of conscripts who are desperately trying to flee the country but are being trapped there through a combination of military force and closing the borders and all kinds of steep punishments for those who try to flee. People who don't want to be used as cannon fodder, who know that's what they're being sent to the front for, who are dying in gigantic numbers. And the U.S. wants this war to go on. We have not only not pursued diplomatic solutions, but... We have blocked the attempt to achieve diplomatic solutions, according to people like Israeli Prime Minister Neftali Bennett, who said that he has tried to broker solutions at the start of the war, but was blocked by doing so from the Biden administration and Boris Johnson, who wanted this war to go on precisely because, as the ad shows, the real purpose of this war has nothing to do with protecting Ukraine. It's to advance Americans, America's geopolitical interests, as they see it, in weakening Russia by essentially saying, we're not dying for this war. We're having the Ukrainians die in huge numbers for this war, and we're getting the benefits. Now, again, I still question, in what conceivable way does the United States benefit from weakening Russia? How is that a benefit to the United States, one that's worth tens of billions of dollars or hundreds of billions of dollars or sending huge numbers of young Ukrainian men to die for in a war? Both President Obama and President Trump spoke about the ability to cooperate with Russia, Their, the fact that they did cooperate with Russia on crucial anti-terrorism policies, including fighting ISIS and al-Qaeda in Syria and Iraq, which is a common goal of both Washington and Moscow. They have cooperated in all sorts of other ways. And yet it was really only after 2016 when American elites needed a villain to blame, and they decided they were going to blame Vladimir Putin and Russia and liberals started feeding on this nonstop anti-Russia discourse to drum up their hatred and anger and contempt and desire to avenge what they believed were the crimes of Vladimir Putin. Only then did Russia become this country who we were supposed to go and destroy. But this ad, at least, is a step forward to an honest debate, even though I don't think it really intended that. I think what it's intending to do is to say to Americans, look, we know that you no longer are moved by the bullshit pretext that we're there in Ukraine because we're good, nice people protecting the Ukrainians. You want to know what this war is doing for you. And we're here to say this war is actually helping you because for a very small price, in the context of the trillion dollar budget that our military consumes every year, even though it can't pass an audit, we are destroying Russia. Now there's, again, no reason given why that benefits Americans is just assume that Americans will be happy about that fact. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.